time for another episode of What's in That Pile, and this time, it's not gonna be a random choice. I got a very specific species I'm gonna try to find in there. What's in that pile? What's in that pile is also not just restricted to the more nicely stacked logs. The shelf of chaos is also in play. Ooh, okay. These two smaller pieces. So what I was hunting for was some juniper wood, and I've got three great samples of Utah juniper here. Now, why juniper in particular? Well, let me turn you around and show you. Okay. As you can see out here in pile number three, we're having our first snowstorm of the season. So that means it's undeniably hygge time. I wonder if I've got any... Yeah, so we got this nice early November snowstorm going on. What do you guys think? That always puts me in the mood to just like hang out in my living room. Excuse me, pancakes. The people want to know. In your years of seniority, how do you feel about this? Drink some coffee or tea, read a book, do some writing. About this early season snowstorm, no comment? No comment from pancakes. One of my favorite ways to up the hygge level by a factor of at least 10 or maybe 14 is with some sawdust incense. And juniper is one of my two favorite smelling species of wood. So let's dive right into it. What do you say, Miles? Oh, what do you say? What do you say? Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna make some juniper sawdust incense, but first let's make a little incense holder. These are honestly one of my favorite projects to make. They're very small, they're simple. It's a great use of scrap wood. What I like to do is just make a little circular disc to set the incense cone on top of. You'll see here in a second how this all works out. But I gravitate toward more simple forms because A, I am more or less a beginner. My skill set is very limited. For me, really intricately designed pieces are something I really admire and love watching. But when it comes to my own personal decorative sense, I just like something a little bit more simple. Let the wood grain kind of stand out and speak out on its own. So let's take this over to the bandsaw, cut out a rough shape, and we'll come back to the lathe. An upside to me being the way that I am is that my garage is littered with not yet begun projects, half started projects, basically just tons of things that I started, got into, and then got distracted by something different, and uh, the cycle repeats itself. Anyway, when I do sit down to make some incense holders, I'll just grab the nearest previous template that I have got lying around and just set this down and just trace a rough circle. We don't need to be crazy accurate here. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle size. I just kind of like whatever, wing it. You don't come to me for precision. You don't come to me to learn how to woodwork properly. There are many other channels for that. Come to me if you want this stuff. <laughs> okay. This already smells so good. Let's get to turning. I use this little handy dandy thing and have our Pennsylvania episode mallet. Again, another reason I love this project is you not only do you not need a very big piece of wood, you don't need a very big lathe. I made a lot of these on my small entry level lathe. Uh, you can use a bench top lathe. Great, great beginner project. Okay. Okay, now it's time to throw the chuck on. Chuck, chuck. Let's throw this in here. At this point, we're already almost done. Turn this down a little bit more, carve a very shallow bowl in the face, part it off, and then we'll be ready to make some incense cones. Also, I just ranted at the camera for like 40 minutes, and uh, I'm not including that in this, but it felt good to get it off my chest. It was kind of like writing a letter and then putting it in your desk and not sending it. Uh, but uh, anyway. This is very exciting. I could tell this piece had some figure in it 
and we've got a bunch of nice curl, which means we're gonna get some of my favorite effect and yours, chatoyancy. For those of you that are new here, chatoyancy is a term that means a surface that looks 3D but feels flat. You get it in gems and in figured wood. So that kind of like shimmery, ripply thing that looks like it has physical bumps to it, but when you run your finger over it, it's smooth. That's chatoyancy. We love to see it. So I'm gonna add some of this furniture butter from walrus oil. I'm very excited. It's like Christmas. We got our first snow of the season, and now we get to oil a figured piece of Utah juniper. Okay. Chatoyancy. I mean, get real. This makes me so happy. This is incredible. Let's part this piece off. And then we're gonna use the sawdust that we made in the course of this project to make a Utah juniper incense cone to burn on this beautiful little thing. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm losing it. Okay. There it is. I'm gonna go finish off the bottom on a belt sander real quick. So now what I'm gonna do is just gather some of this gorgeous sawdust from off of the lathe, primarily from the bandsaw. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got our sawdust here, and from this point, it's pretty simple. All I add to it is a little bit of xanthan gum as a binder. Whoop. Mix that together, and then I just start adding water, a little bit by little bit, mixing it together until it reaches the right consistency. Mako powder is another binder that you can use that adds like that classic incense scent. I use xanthan gum specifically because it doesn't add any kind of scent. I wanna smell just the wood itself, especially when you've got a species like juniper. There's nothing I can add to this to make it better. All right, this feels like a pretty good consistency, which means we're ready to mold it. Now, this is where you might have to get a little bit creative if you're trying this at home. The first several batches I made, I actually just used an old plastic water bottle. I cut it up and then I curled it into a cone shape, taped it together and stuffed the dough in and then untaped it. It was very time consuming and finicky, but it works. Even if you just wanted to mold it by hand, you could do that. You could just kind of go like this. It wouldn't be the prettiest thing in the world, but like you just make kind of a cone shape. That would work. I ended up just taking a block of maple, throwing it on the lathe and turning three semi cone shaped holes into it and then cutting it in half and gluing on some non-stick foil to just help batch these a bit quicker. Far from the best solution, but it works okay. Just use these clamps to hold the mold together. So just uh, unclamp, open it up, and we've got us some nice little incense cones. It is definitely not the cleanest activity, but who doesn't love making a nice mess from time to time? Okay, once your cones are done, uh, you just bake it in an oven. If you've got a toaster oven, that works great. You can throw it in your regular oven. I usually bake mine at around 250 or so, and it can take quite a while. You basically just wanna bake them until they look and feel completely dried out. Let it go for about a half hour or so, or, or until they appear dried out on the top, and then you're gonna wanna tip them all on their side. They dry out more evenly if once you've dried out the top, you tip it over and let it dry out on its side. So I'm gonna go throw these in the oven, and we'll be back in a few hours. It's been a few hours. These are now fully dried out. These feel really sturdy, then they're probably fine. If all else fails, you can break one in half and see if they're fully dried out. Now all I'm gonna do is take our freshly made, beautiful incense holder here, add a little bit of sand and plop this on top, and let's get to lighting it. The smell of juniper smoke is just as unmistakable as the scent of the wood itself, distinctly sharp and spicy in a warm and welcoming way. To me, it smells like home. The juniper is a tree that dominates huge swaths of the American West. The red rock cliffs of the Colorado Plateau, the high cold deserts of the Great Basin. Throughout the western interior, you're almost always a stone's throw away from some species of juniper. 
It's a special thing how each species of tree produces scents and aromas so unique. For me, this little cone of sawdust can evoke so many things. The gentle crackle of a juniper campfire, shadows and firelight dancing across the cap rock of a nearby mesa, the steam rising from a mug of hot coffee in the cold quiet of pre-dawn with nothing but a sea of dimly lit sagebrush for miles in every direction. For someone else, this smells nothing like home. Maybe it evokes a place shrouded in mystery. Maybe it's nothing more than a pleasant smoky smell. And then of course for each person, another species of wood is sure to bring entirely different images and thoughts and memories. And that's such a wonderful thing. Imagine a world where each tree and plant smelled the exact same. Variety is indeed the spice of life. And I can't think of a better way than this to enjoy the variety of the first snow of the season. So thanks for spending this one with me.